Albert Gilbert. Our special guests are... She knows all there is to know in Albert Square. It's Rita Simons. And the brilliant Australian comedian, Adam Hills. They're here every week, still with a funny story to tell. It's Greg Davis. And it's Rod's flatmate, Lloyd. Ladies and gentlemen, ask Rod Gilbert. My name is Rod Gilbert and tonight my job is to find the answers to the questions that keep us all awake at night. Questions like, wouldn't Susan Boyle have been better off releasing a pamphlet than a book? People thought I looked like I couldn't sing. Turns out I can. The end. <laughs> Some questions go to the heart of who we are. Questions of national importance such as, why do newspapers keep giving me meaningless facts and statistics? You're more likely to get divorced than you are to change your bank. What am I supposed to do with that information? What am I supposed to do? If you told me I was more likely to get divorced than stay married, then fair enough. But who's going to think, blimey, changing banks is a bit of a palaver. I know, I'll get shot of the missus instead. <laughs> Sorry, love, you had to go. It was either that or try and cancel a few direct debits. You'll find someone else. You'll see the kids in the bank every now and again. We'll look back at this and laugh when our new checkbooks come through. <laughs> And what about this one? There's more germs in your kitchen sink than there are in the lavatory. What am I going to do with that? <laughs> Wash up in the toilet? Because it's spotless, our toilet. I'll just stroll in while my partner's on the lavvy. Shall I say shift over, love? Those plates aren't going to wash themselves. I've got a bag of King Edwards to scrub you. And while you're there, give the flesh up. All this chicken needs a rinse. <laughs> Stop giving me meaningless facts comparing arbitrary things. 87% of us are less likely to be interested in them than we are to be attacked by Trevor MacDonald in our beds. <laughs> On with the show. In a world full of baloney, we need someone with credibility to help us find the answers to our questions. So, as always, we begin by asking, who is tonight's authenticator? Whoever it is, we'll need all the charm he employed as Casanova. All the passion of Hamlet holding the skull of Yorick. All the charisma that drives the ladies wild. He'll need to be as brave as when he faces the universe's disgusting monsters. Who is tonight's authenticator? It's David Tennant! David. Hi, good evening. How that are you? That was a wonderful morphing you did for us today. Thank you very much. I, it's just one of the skills that I give you for free this evening. Thank you for joining us tonight. It's a great pleasure to be here. Yeah, how are you going to help us tonight? Well, uh, I will be providing you and this beautiful panel in front of me with lots of juicy bits of information which will help us stagger towards the truth uh, of the questions being answered this evening. Perfect. And when I think we have an answer, I will do this. Hello, Rita. Hello. Thanks for joining us. Pleasure. What, what have you been asked this week? Could I please refrain from sticking chewing gum under the bar of the Queen Vic? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, well, because you know when you're going, well, when you're going for a take, it's always so quick. So you're, I've always got gum, and I always, I don't mean to, but I stick it under the bar. So anyway, we've now got a ball that we've kind of collected. <laughs> <laughs> I'm disappointed that you're sticking chewing gum around the... <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Doctor Who versus EastEnders. <laughs> yeah. Adam, what have, you, uh, what have you learnt this week? I've learnt that Australia has a saint. Uh, uh, saint Mary of the Cross. Uh, and what was amazing about it was Australians turned up at the Vatican and acted like Australians at a sporting event. <laughs> in green and gold. No. They were waving flags. And I kid you not, they chanted... Mary, 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 oi, oi, oi. <laughs> so uh, let's find out who wants to know what tonight. Will, it's Will I Am from the Black Eyed Peas. Will I Am says, Rod, I want to know what you're going to do with all that junk. <laughs> all that junk inside your trunk. Look, Will I Am, will you get off my case about that flipping trunk? I have told you a hundred times I'm going to take it down the tip, but I haven't had a chance, all right? <laughs> Oh, the Chilean miners. Have you been following the Chilean miners' story? David, have you been Sure, following? how could you miss it? Yeah. You're a fan of them? 
Oh, I love, I love the president who had, had his teeth whitened over them clearly before, <laughs> before they all got out. I'm not sure whether he's had his teeth whitened or just whether his teeth are clean and the rest of them coming up. Well, <laughs> Whatever happened, whatever happened to the guy whose, whose wife met his mistress at the top of the mile? Well, I, I don't know what did happen, because what, what was his it actually wife, happened? His, his wife, wife uh, didn't show up to meet him at the top, but his mistress did. <laughs> yeah, but how did it emerge? Because they went to... They were at the scene of the mine. At the scene of the mine! <laughs> They're at the top of the mine. <laughs> at the scene of the mine. <laughs> and, and the wife was, like, crying over a photograph and kissing it and whatever, and then the another woman sidled up next to her. <laughs> with a, yeah, with the same photograph, and she was like, how do you know him? <laughs> and is, has he now gone off with the mistress? Is that the... Uh... Yeah, cos no. the wife didn't show up. <laughs> Technically, she shafted him. <laughs> Who's next? Oh. Hayden Panettiere. Nicely pronounced. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see what Hayden Panettiere wants to know. Hi, Rod. I just wrapped on my new film, and I spent so much time working, it got me wondering, who do we spend more time with? Our boss or our partner? <laughs> who do we spend more time with, our boss or our partners? David, can you uh, see what you can find out for us? Who do you spend more time with, boss or partner, Rita? I don't spend any time with my boss. <laughs> are you? Because we're on the, on the main floor at EastEnders and all the big offices are upstairs. It's now got to the point where we don't even bother saying their names. We just go, them, it's them upstairs, them upstairs. You don't spend any time with them. And I don't spend any time with my partner either, so... <laughs> <Neither>. <laughs> Who do we spend more time with, our boss or our partner? Well, I'm self-employed, so... Uh... <laughs> I am my own boss, so I spend all of my time with my boss. And <laughs> let me tell you, the sexual harassment is horrendous. <laughs> David, have you got any, uh, anything for us? Any facts, information that can help us? Well, on, on frustrations with uh, workplace technology, I've got a little film to show you here. Have you ever lost it, Lloyd? With, have you ever lost it with technology? Yeah, cling film. <laughs> I'm not sure that counts as technology, Lloyd. <laughs> I think in, in Wales that very much counts as technology. <laughs> it's contrary, isn't it? Like you, <laughs> you rip off a bit about this big and then you turn your back on it for a second. <laughs> and it's about, whoa, it's, whoa, 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 whoa. It's about whoa, the size of a film. Nobody else in the world. Rips off cling film and then turns their back on it. <laughs> no, no. Using cling film is a very straightforward procedure. Tear, tear, use. Not tear. <laughs> sort of folds in on itself. So I've, I've ripped out a, big, a bit about this big, right? So I ripped it out. Then I go to get the thing I'm going to wrap. Well, wrap why didn't you the get cling... the thing you were going to wrap in the first place? Well, because I haven't thought through, have I? You know, I'm sort of. Right. I'm working on the hoof. <laughs> Why are you wrapping presents in cling film? <laughs> People will guess what they are straight away. It's not, it's not a present, it's like a pack of bacon or something. As a present! <laughs> so there we are, you've got your pack of bacon, now you rip the cling film, you turn your back for a second, as you... And presumably the cling film goes, <laughs> watch this. <laughs> That's exactly, exactly right. Let's have a look. Have we got any more facts for it? Yeah, of course we do. Uh, an estimated 8 million singles in the UK are looking for love, and last year it was projected they would go on 18 million first dates, and that at least 6 million of those dates would end in disaster. Mm -hmm. Doesn't yeah. tell us what disaster is. I mean, disaster, that's quite a broad church. Well, what would you count as a disaster? Well, well it's difficult to know. I mean, is that anything from not calling back to 
No, I don't think not calling back would be a disaster. Not calling back would be unfortunate. I don't think it'd be a disaster. <laughs> have you got any disastrous first date? Lloyd, have you... I've got one. I went on a first date with someone and I thought I would do, I would play, do a little magic trick. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the Is that a euphemism? That. <laughs> no, it wasn't a euphemism. It was actually... Look, I only know... <laughs> I know one magic trick and it's this. If you put a staple in a piece of paper, right, you take, you empty out the stapler. So you've got... And then you cover up the staple with your finger. So it looks like you've just got a normal piece of paper and a stapler. And then the magic trick is you put that up there, put the stapler up and go... <laughs> and because it's, if, it's a, if it's a post-it note, it'll stick to your forehead, there's a staple in it, and ha-ha, it looks like you've stapled yourself in the forehead. <laughs> Hands up who thinks they might see where this is going. <laughs>